Hello, my name is Jim with the RIT Launch Initiative. Today, we're going to be reviewing how to interpret flight data results from OpenRocket and determining if your rocket is safe to fly. Let's take a look at this example rocket. This is a level 2 rocket that will fly to about 12,000 to 13,000 feet. I've already assembled this rocket in real life and gone through and overridden the mass and center of gravity of all the subcomponents to ensure it's as accurate as possible. Let's go and run a flight simulation using the L265 motor. We can see over here immediately there's a green light. Green means that this flight has successfully launched and landed. However, there is this red icon indicating that a recovery device has deployed at a high speed. And then it says right there, 110 feet per second. Generally, you don't want any recovery device deploying over 10 feet per second, or 15 feet per second for something small. So let's see what's actually happening here. If we double click and ask it to plot the altitude versus velocity, and we include the recovery device deployment button, and hit plot, we can see what's happening is right here, the motor is burning out, we're continuing to coast, and then before we reach our apogee, it looks like this, uh, this drogue parachute is deploying. So let's go into the rocket design and see what's triggering that drogue parachute. It's currently set to deploy at apogee, so that's not it. What about the simulation conditions? We can see here that the wind speed is very fast for this launch site. It might be that this rocket can only be launched in lower wind speeds. So if we do that, and then we hit close, we're now deploying slower at about 87.4 feet per second. So it's definitely an issue with the wind sending the rocket over sideways. So it's a lateral velocity, not vertical velocity issue. What if we edit the simulation to set the launch rail to only one degree off vertical? That looks a lot better on the plot. And now we are below the critical value. It's still very high at 39.3 feet. But to get from that 15 feet recommended up to 39 feet, we can use special safety harnesses like deployment bags. So that seems okay. Now let's read through each of these and see if this is good or not. The first one is the velocity off rod. This refers to how fast the rocket is flying once it's come off the end of the launch rail. It needs to be flying fast enough that the aerodynamic surfaces of the fins and the nose cone produce stable flight. Generally, this number, you want to see it between 30 and 60 feet per second. Much faster than that, it might run the risk of you melting and burning off your launch logs due to the friction. Any slower and the rocket will probably fall over before it starts flying. The next value is apogee. Right now our apogee is just under 12,000 feet. The launch site we'll be launching at has a waiver up to 18,000 feet, so this is okay. You never want to bust the waiver or go above it. This can lead to very serious fines and ramifications from the FAA. I would not want to launch this rocket at a launch site that has a waiver less than 13 to 14,000 feet. You always want to leave yourself a bit of a buffer room. Velocity at deployment, we already went through and fixed that up. Optimum delay, if you're using a rocket motor that has a deployment charge built in, you can use this to set that deployment so that it goes off at Apogee. We're using onboard electronics for this one, so that won't be an issue. Maximum velocity is about 909 feet per second, which is mod 0.83, which we can see down here in the corner. This is getting onto the realm of danger. If your rocket goes into the mock transition zone, which generally starts around mod 0.7 to 0.8, the fiberglass or plastic tip of your nose cone might heat up so much that it begins to melt. 
Generally, any rocket going above Mach 0.8 will have a metal nose cone tip. This rocket has an all fiberglass nose cone, but I'm going to reinforce the tip with some thick aluminum foil now that I've seen these results. Time to apogee is just useful for determining how long your flight is going to be, along with flight time, which is the time to apogee plus the time for your deployment system to descend. Ground hit velocity tells us how fast the rocket will be falling when it hits the ground. 13.2 feet per second is pretty safe. Most rockets, you want it to be below 15. Since this rocket has such extremely swept wings, I want to get that number a little bit lower. I can do that by increasing the size of my main parachute, or perhaps increasing the altitude at which I deploy my main parachute. The drawback to both is that the rocket will drift further. Speaking of, let's see how far of a walk it's going to be for me to go and recover this rocket in the field. I can plot the altitude versus the lateral distance, and it will tell me that the rocket's going to launch. Altitude will continue to increase. I'm getting further and further away from the launch site until 11,000 feet at maximum after which the wind will take it back under parachute and it will drift all the way back and we end up at a lateral distance of only 300 feet. This is extremely good. Normally for a rocket this size you'd be walking one half to one mile to recover it. This is also a useful metric for determining how far the range of your transponders need to go for GPS tracking and data analysis. That looks good. All those values look good. I think this is a pretty safe rocket to launch. Join us next time when we go through some more advanced construction techniques using OpenRocket.